Before our very eyes, we are witnessing these signs. We are witnessing bloodshed, many earthquakes, time passing quickly. When three things appear, no good will do to a soul to believe in them then, if it did not believe before, nor earn righteousness through its faith. And he mentioned one, if the beast emerges from the earth. When it comes out, the door of Tobit will be shut. You'll either own more men or cap it on that day. They will see the reality, the truth, the fact, and they will believe. They will believe. They will say, we believe, we believe. We believe. We are witnessing before our very eyes the clues of its approach of the hour through information in the Quran and Sunnah. The destitute shepherds, look at them. They're competing in building, constructing lofty high rises buildings. The disappearance of knowledge. We are witnessing intoxicants, whether it's drunk or induced in great quantities. We are witnessing illicit sexual relations becoming widespread. It's become nothing. It's become norm. We are witnessing filthy river. We are witnessing musical instruments becoming wide. Many earthquakes, time passing quickly. We are witnessing bloodshed, whereby the killer does not know why he killed, nor the killed know why he was killed. We are witnessing lack of trustworthiness, authority given to those who don't deserve it, the increase of police and their oppressors. We are witnessing the increase of tribulations, afflictions, trials, hatred, enmity between people. We are witnessing nudity, ladies dressed in nothing, Literally nothing. We are witnessing the increase in the number of ladies and the decrease in the number of men. We are fortunate to have been blessed with such details of coming events. As the last hour draws near, no other nation, no other people have been fortunate to have been blessed with such details of future trials and event. However, before our very eyes, we are witnessing these signs. They testify with certainty that we are indeed on the verge of a change. Thus, we must take this matter seriously. We must prepare our luggage for our final destination. Allah Ta'ala says in Surah Al-Anbiya إِقَطَرَبَ لِلنَّاسِ حِسَابُهُمْ وَهُمْ فِي غَفْلَةٍ مُعْرِدُونَ Draws near to mankind is their reckoning is their destruction yet they turn away in heedlessness they hear these signs we are hearing them tonight but we turn away tonight and say ah Alhamdulillah another lesson just another lesson but it's not just another lesson if you take it as another lesson with our application, you're wasting your time. It must move yourself, make you move, make your body change, live differently from tonight. They see it, the day of judgment, as a far off event. But Allah says, we see it as quite near. In Surah Muhammad, he mentions, are they waiting for anything except the hour to come to them suddenly? But its signs have already come. Is Allah talking to us, brothers and sisters? Allah is saying to us, what are you waiting for? Are you waiting for the major sign to come and hit you? Because there's nothing left but the major signs. Are you waiting for the beast of the earth to come and slap your face or mark your face? 
with the word mu'min or kafir? When this very strange, amazing, speaking, huge, hairy beast of the earth emerges. So hairy that you will not be able to tell its front from its rear. Having two things that were owned, possessed by two previous prophets. The ring of Suleiman and the rod of Moses. When it comes out, this beast won't give you a chance. It won't give you a chance. You're either a mu'min or a kafir on that day. As soon as the people see this beast, they'll be terrified. But where are they going to hide? They cannot hide. This is a major sign decreed by the Almighty Lord. When it sees the believer, this speaking beast, who will adorn the believer's face by writing the best word that can ever be written. It writes on his face. Mu'min, believer. What a beautiful word. A sign of humbleness, submissiveness, devotion, motivation, obedience to the Almighty Lord. Isn't this what we want? Do you not want the beast of the earth to mark your face with Mu'min? Because that word Mu'min will end up being eternal salvation for you. If we only understood what the word believer meant. But are we believers? Question yourself. And when it sees the disbeliever, it will destroy his face or her face. And this is not symbolic or metaphoric. It's reality. It's genuine. It will destroy the disbeliever's face by writing the dirtiest the worst word that can ever be written. Kafir. A sign of infidelity, disbelief, filth. A sign of dirt. Is that what we want? Oh, If this beast comes out, the door of repentance is closed. Once it comes out, you cannot say no more. Oh, I believe, I believe. Please put what in here. No. It's too late. Likewise, another sign that if it emerges, no good will do to the soul to believe in it then, is the sun rising from the place of its setting, the west. When they see the sun coming from the west, they will say, we believe, we believe. But when do you believe? After you've seen reality? Where were you before? Muhammad asked Abu Dhar, Ya Abu Dhar, do you know where the sun goes when it sets? He said, I do not know, O Prophet of Allah. He says, Sallallahu It travels until it prostrates itself beneath the throne of the Almighty Lord, seeking permission for it to rise again. This is every single time. When the sun sets, every single time, it seeks permission Ya Rabb, can I rise or not? And Allah will allow it to. But a time will come when Allah will say, Go back from where you came. And that will be the day, as the hadith mentions, that no good will do to a soul to believe in it then, if it believed not before, nor earned righteousness through its faith. Where are those who joke, who take it as a mockery, as a laughter, who say it does not mean this, it means another meaning, symbolic, it's something else. Wallahi, you will not be able to benefit after you see it with your own eyes. يَوْمَ يَأْتِ بَعْدُ آيَاتِ رَبِّكَ لَا يَنْفَعُ نَفْسًا إِيمَانُهَا لَمْ تَكُنْ آمَنَتْ مِنْ قَبْلُ أَوْ كَسَبَتْ فِي إِيمَانِهَا خَيْرًا The day that some of the signs of your Lord do come, but no good would do to a soul to believe in it then if it believed not before. Nor earned righteousness through its faith. Look at this, how this verse explains the reality of a Muslim. If it believed not before, the second phrase of the verse says, Nor earned righteousness through its faith. Are they waiting for the signs 
to come to them suddenly, but its signs has already come. Are they waiting for Gog and Magog? Yeah, you do my Jewish. Two hidden tribes of people from the offspring of Adam. How did they look? Allahu Alam. Dhul Qurnayn, who was a righteous king ruling the east and the west. Allah Ta'ala gave him the ability, the power to build, to erect a huge barrier which restrained Gog and Magog behind it. However, ever since that barrier was built, they've been trying to dig their way out of this barrier. Every single day, they are digging, they are digging. As soon as they see a hole and light piercing through that hole, the one in charge says to them, stop, we will carry on tomorrow. And this will continue and continue and continue. But when they come the next day, they find that barrier stronger than ever. But the day will come when Allah Ta'ala wills, allows them to come out. That will be the day when their leader says, after they see the light through that hole, Insha'Allah will continue tomorrow. So the next day they come and see the hole exactly as they left it. So they continue digging that hole until they come out and they ravage the earth. They harm the people. They will strike their arrows into the heavens and will come back with some kind of blood on it. They will say, we have beaten the people on the earth and overcome those in the heaven. They'll go past the lake in Palestine. The first one that gets to this lake, he will start drinking. When the last one gets to this lake, he will say, there used to be water here. In other words, they would have drank all the water. It's a huge lake. This antichrist, this one-eyed liar, he will be given 40 days, but one of those days will be like one year. Another would be like one month. A third would be like one week. And the rest of the days would be like our normal days. He was described as being huge, a huge man, red complexion, short curly hair, one-eyed. The other eye looks like a floating grape, a floating grape. Between his two eyes written, kafir, the dirtiest word that can ever be written. Every single Muslim will be able to read this word, literate or illiterate, except those who are not believers. He mentions وسلم, that no tribulation on earth since the creation of Adam will be worse than the tribulation of this liar of the Dajjal. He will begin by saying, I am your prophet, but there will be no prophet after me, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. Then he will claim that he is the Lord, he is your Lord, but you will not see your Lord until you die. He will have with him paradise and hell, but that which he claims paradise is reality. Hellfire and that which he claims to be hellfire is <coughs> paradise. He will be given the authority, the power over one man whom he will kill. He will say, look at this slave of mine. I will resurrect him and he will still claim that he has a Lord other than me. So Allah Ta'ala will resurrect him. And the Jah will ask him, who is your Lord? Who say, my Lord is Allah, Allah Akbar. My Lord is Allah Ta'ala. And he will say that you are the enemy of Allah Ta'ala. You are the Dajjal. Yeah. And he will say, by Allah, I have never been more sure of this than I am today. And Muhammad yeah. said about this person, he will have the highest status among my imma in paradise. Wouldn't you like to be this person? Subhanallah. Yeah, and Allah, we should be doing dua day and night, day and night to be this person. In another narration, it's mentioned that the Dajjal would try to slaughter him, saw him in two again. He did it the first time by the will of Allah. He will try to do it again, but Allah Ta'ala will make the space between his collarbone and neck copper. So he will try and he will be unsuccessful. He will not be able to do anything to, for, to him. Then he will grab him by the legs and the arms and throw him to what they believe his evil followers as being hellfire. But in reality, he's been thrown into eternal bliss of paradise. 
and the narration mentions in that one that he will be the greatest he will be the greatest martyr in the sight of Allah Lord of the worlds he will pass through a town this evil one-eyed lion this Satan he'll pass through a town whose people will deny him and all the stock the livestock will die they won't be called livestock after that they'll be called dead stock and then he'll be he'll pass through another area whose people will believe in him so he'll issue a command to the heavens rain and it rains and to the earth to bring forth its corrupts and it does by the will of Allah Ta'ala and the grazing animals return from grazing fatter than ever big chubby bellies because of the crops that the earth produce he will walk on earth like a cloud driven by fast wind calling people to his false religion who are his followers the majority of his followers are Jews one narration says 70,000 Jews and likewise Arabs the narration mentions Arabs will be a lot of his followers the ignorant Arabs he'll go to an Arabian desert man like a nomad Bedouin and he will say to him what would you do or what would you say would you believe in me if I bring back your mother and father he said yes you know I can do that but Allah Ta'ala and Allah Ta'ala will make that he will assume two devils who assume the appearance of his mother and father and then they will call out to this child oh son follow this person for he is your Lord follow him for he is your Lord and likewise his followers will be ladies females in one narration it mentions that the man will tie his mother his sister his daughter his auntie and every female relative to a pole fearing that they may chase this one-eyed liar as for his death it will be time for Salat Al-Fajr when Isa ibn Maryam will descend and he will descend wearing two garments dyed in saffron placing his hands on the wings of two angels as he's descending he lowers his head beads of perspiration will fall from it if he raises his head beads of pearls will scatter from it his fragrance any kafir every kafir that smells it will die and it can be smelt his breath as far as he can see a whole group of Muslims gathered together ready to fight the Jal it will be Salat Al-Fajr and the Iqama will be just about to be announced when the leader of this prayer of the congregation will be Al-Mahdi Muhammad ibn Abdullah he will step back when he notices Isa coming down and will tell Isa please lead us in prayer but Isa will place his hands between the shoulders of the Al-Mahdi and he will say pray for the prayer has been made or announced for you so Al-Mahdi prays and after the prayer Isa salam says open the gate the gate will be opened and behind that gate will be no other than this one-eyed liar with an army of Jews and there they will be bearing all of them a sword and a shield when they see this enemy of Allah Ta'ala the Antichrist when he sees Isa alayhi salam he starts dissolving like salt dissolves in water and he run away but Isa will call out and say to them say to him you will not die until I strike you with my sword so he, he will meet up with him on a gate called the Eastern Gate of Lad this is all in the Middle East and there Isa salam will strike him with his sword and he will die and all the Jews his army will be deflated there will be nowhere to hide not a wall not a tree not a stone not a creature except this this inanimate or animate creature will say O oh Muslim behind me is the Jew come and kill him thus Isa and the companions will win over these evil people 
and they will at the same time do dua, pray for Allah Ta'ala to destroy Gog and Magog because Gog and Magog will be in that time they'll still be there and they'll be causing mischief on earth so they'll do dua, Isa will do dua and the companions of Isa, the Muslims that Allah Ta'ala destroys Gog and Magog so Allah Ta'ala will send an insect that will destroy Gog and Magog by biting them on their necks and the next day they will all perish as one and then they'll do another dua to Allah Ta'ala that he sends birds like the, the camel's necks, long birds which will carry Gog and Magog and take them wherever Allah Ta'ala wills and that will be the end of them after that peace and security will prevail on earth whereby the lions will graze with the camels, the tigers with the cattle, the wolves with the sheep, the kids will be able to play with snakes without coming to harm, wealth will be in abundance, no one will care about it, the rain will come down in abundance, the earth will bring forth its blessings, a single pomegranate, you know what Roman is, the Roman pomegranate, will be eaten by a whole party and they'll even seek shelter underneath its skin, a milch camel will supply for a whole party of milk. A cow will supply for a whole tribe and a sheep will supply for a whole family. There will be no enmity between two persons after this and Isa alayhi salam will not come with any new laws. Instead, he will be a follower of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for indeed the deen of Islam is the end of all deens. Allah Ta'ala will end every sect, every religion other than Islam. Isa alayhi salam will kill the pig and break the cross and thus he will live for 40 years he will die he'll be prayed on and buried by the muslims